Hey everyone, welcome to an interview series on the AAISP Inside Sales Studio. I'm Bob Perkins with the AISP. I'm very pleased to welcome our guest today, Paul Melcurry. Paul, welcome. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. I recently met Paul and also uh, one of your business associates and co-author of a book we're going to talk about, Mark uh, Petruzzi. And uh, at a later date, I'll probably have Mark on to talk through some of the other uh, points of the book. But today, uh, Paul's going to talk about uh, four things in this new book, Selling the Cloud. There it is right there. Hold, keep it uh, held up, Paul. Uh, Paul has deep experience in B2B sales. He was an early executive at uh, SAP, helped them build out their uh, digital inside sales organization. Uh, he also was uh, uh, involved with building Ariba, uh, their inside sales, and more recently uh, worked through an IPO at Anaplan. So you have deep, deep expertise in this virtual selling, and we're, you're going to talk about four things today. So stay tuned throughout this whole uh, interview here to talk about the importance of velocity and grit, uh, building trust virtually. Well, today, everyone is selling virtually, not just inside sales, uh, a little bit about technology stack and then customer success. So with that, Paul, why don't you get us started? Give us, uh, give the viewers just a, a, a very quick uh, a background of what you're currently doing. And then let's jump into that first topic. Great. Thank you, Bob. Currently I've uh, made a switch to the dark side. I'm in private equity now at a company <laughs> called Stripes in New York and working with a bunch of great portfolio companies and young entrepreneurs. So it's, it's a lot of fun to put that 35 plus years of operating experience and, and work with a large number of uh, great young companies. So that's keeping me busy. And then of, of course, uh, got, uh, you know, encouraged to, to write a book during this uh, crazy time. And I think the timing is, is, is absolutely perfect. So really excited to, to share some of those experiences. And a lot of what we'll talk about really is embedded in the book here. So excited yeah, to, to get going. Well, let, you, you know, you and I talked before, t talk to the viewers about this velocity and grit as it relates to salespeople. Yeah, you know, and it reminds me of, you know, growing up too in, in the city and, and, you know, working at a really early age, you know, and, and everyone knows in sales, velocity, it's a numbers game that that hasn't changed and probably mm. never will change. So obviously, the harder uh, that you're working, the more that you've got volume, you know, your chances of success are higher. But uh, one of our titans, and we interview a lot of folks who've been in the business a long time, Joe Fuca, he, he uh, got DocuSign going. And if you, you know, we all know DocuSign now because of our current environment, mm -hmm. but uh, when no one knew it, uh, he was building their inside sales team and most of their sales growth came through inside sales. Yes. And he, you know, his ex-football player, you know, football, real football, not soccer, yeah, yeah. You're a tough guy. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and Joe would always say, look, I would interview people and hire people in sales that reminded me you know, of himself, where they had the grit, the teamwork, the determination, yeah. not necessarily the smarts or the, the EQ, but, the, but really that grit. He felt that, you know, if you had velocity and grit, it would outpace, you know, maybe smarts in, in, in some circumstances. So I, I kind of agree. I always had a philosophy, Bob, when I interviewed sales reps, I'd like to take people, I'd hire A students from B schools, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> because they had velocity, they had grit, they understood you know, what they needed to do to get the job done. They were street fighters like myself. So I, I can understand why Joe, you know, leaned that way in his yeah. uh, hiring processes. So it's, it's so important, whether you're in inside sales or selling in general, they're, they're just incredible, um, you know, components to success. It's a tough profession because we get knocked down so much. You want someone oh. that gets back up, continues to prospect, make that next call. Uh, your second point, and a lot of these things are covered in the book and more than what we'll talk about today, but we picked out four. This one to me is huge, right? There's some people that still think you got to shake a hand, pat it back to build trust. I don't believe that. I think you can build trust virtually. You do too, especially today. We can look eye to eye uh, using video. So what, what's behind this building trust virtually? Yeah, and I think uh, if you look, and there's a section that, uh, you know, Mark, our co-author, and, and Charlie Green, who built that whole trusted advisor, wrote a bunch of books around yeah. it, they were really way ahead of their time in that, you know, they were building trust and had these trust principles that they, they haven't changed since the beginning of time. And people yeah. still buy from people, yeah. right? Especially the more complex the selling environment, Bob. So 
I think that hasn't changed. Now, you know, in the way we grew up, it was shaking hands and now it's a fist pump or a yeah. elbow thing or whatever they yeah. do today. And so those things have definitely changed and, and it's very different, but the principles remain the same. You have to get someone to trust you to feel comfortable because they're probably putting their career on the line or they're definitely putting, right. you know, important things if they're recommending your product or service uh, and they're the ones that are going to be, you know, judged on the decision and the results of that decision. Trust is very, very important. So, yeah, there's different ways. It's instead of going out to dinner, um, you know, maybe you hold a virtual, you know, wine tasting event with sure. your client. So yeah. anything that you can do to build the trust. And, you know, I, I've always said uh, a lot of the generation today, and I have four children, so I lived it, um, you know, with text and yeah. Snapchats and whatever, yeah. social media. Yeah. They, if you ever go onto one of your children's phones, and if you see how much they've actually used the phone for phone calling, it's like zero minutes. It's like, like little to none. Yeah. Pick up the phone, let yeah. your voice be heard. Just, you know, make a phone call and, and you know, you don't have to get on a Zoom because a Zoom might be less personal. You know, actual phone <clears> conversations <throat> old school, but they go a long way to building that trust. And, and, you know, you mentioned uh, earlier too, about uh, be interested in the person when you show interest, Hey, tell me more about your kids. Yeah. You know, Paul, what, you know, when I have in, true interest in you, when you tell me about your kids or your job or whatever, and I'm interested, you know, instead of me just talking about what I want to talk about. or Yeah. Product. Cause you know, at, at the end of the day, people are, are not buying the product or service because you know, we talk a lot of, in the book about differentiating and the reality is the technology is so good today, the yeah. services, the capabilities, yeah. you know, they all kind of work yeah. and right. some might be a little better than others, yeah. but for the most part, you know, they all get the job done. And so how do you yeah. differentiate yourself? And a lot of it is not just product or feature or function related. It's building that trust, becoming that advisor and yeah. really showing that interest in the person that, that may get you over the top. Great. All right. So you mentioned product uh, differentiation and uh, let's talk about technologies today. Uh, there's so much out there that's part of the problem, but yet some people still are missing some of the fundamentals. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. You know, as, as a CRO for many years, I've always looked and said, <clears throat> I've only been as good and I've been lucky, thankfully, to getting very strong operational mm. and support functions built around me. Yeah. And so if you have, and I, I, I call it a tech stack and, you know, maybe let's think of CRM as the foundation sure. and I don't want to get into a, a technology stack description, yeah. but yeah. just think about it. If, if you're in a situation like I know N3 where Mark work, they're a big outsourced inside sales organization. So yeah. they'll outsource <laughs> everything for you. And within 36 hours, because they had invested in this tech stack over X number of years, yeah. they were able to take large demand centers, you know, based overseas or in Atlanta or in other places and literally have it virtual in 36 hours. Yeah. And you saw over this COVID period, companies who were prepared and companies who were maybe less than prepared. That's right. right? If you were less than prepared. It was probably because you didn't have a solid foundation. You didn't have your tech stack and you didn't have the capabilities, maybe even some of the basic capabilities, security, et cetera, for people to work from home. So I, I stress now that everyone knows they need to get there, uh, making sure they not only have that strong foundation on the technology side, as more and more sales move to inside or virtual selling, it's so critical that you have the proper technology and, and every little thing is going to matter. Uh, the bandwidth and the, 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 you know, the ability to have an, a quiet environment to, to go through that fancy microphone that you have. I'm yeah. looking at that. I'm thinking yeah. I need to have one of those, right? Well, you sound pretty good, you know, but I, I listen. <laughs> just because I'm loud. Yeah. But. <laughs> Speaking of technology, I talked to a firm just two days ago that they're, all their inside sales people were, for the past couple of years, were making outbound calls on their cell phone. Well, they, oh, got, yeah, a yeah. they got a dialer technology and now mm -hmm. they just click and it auto dials uh, through, uh, you know, through the computer, things like that. So we let's get a whole session. Uh, Bob on the tech stack, probably 30 minutes if you want to do a drill down. Yeah. And I'd be more than happy to go through all those components. I actually think I did it at 
um, one of the PE firms that had invited me into their portfolio companies. It's so critical yeah. that you have that foundation in place if you're going to be successful. And they can, uh, the viewers here can pick up a copy of your book and, and learn more about all these, uh, all these. There it is. Self-promotion right here. Right. And I know it's already been, been selling pretty hot. You told me, right? Yeah, pretty we're pretty excited. We, yeah. we think we hit it, uh, you know, pretty much on the mark and that it's, it's not one of these, you know, how to books or right. sales process books. I mean, mm. you know, there's so many different methodologies yeah. and techniques and, and there's some amazing books and folks have done and specialized in that. And I've pretty much used every methodology over 30 something years. So I think we're all basically the same. They're just tweaked differently. Yeah, no, I, yeah. All right. So we're going to, we're going to wrap up with the final one. And, and that has to do with customer success. So important today in our recurring revenue model to, to make sure that, uh, that they're successful with whatever you're selling. Talk to us about that. Yeah. And we, we cover that pretty extensively in the book with two of what I think are the most amazing customer success people in the history mm -hmm. of enterprise software. So uh, my friend and colleague, Eileen, who worked with uh, me at SAP in the very early days before mm -hmm. it was called customer success yeah. and working with some of the early SAP customers in the early nineties would say, I'd say very challenging yeah. uh, to say the least. And then bringing it all the way up to Maria uh, Martinez, who's at Cisco now running it, but she was the one who originally uh, built the salesforce.com customer success group. So hearing uh, from those two ladies is, it, it, that's, wow. that's well worth the, the price of admission for sure. And if you really think about it, the customers pay our bills and everyone has a model oh, customer first. I mean, I can't yeah. tell you how many companies have customer that first. logo yeah. or that mantra or go on every website Every single company talks about customer, customer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very few know how to execute <laughs> and do it properly. And, yeah. and learning from these two ladies is, is just fantastic. And the ability to decipher between hunting and farming. And, you know, I know a lot of salespeople want that new business. They want to bring the new logo in. But the reality is most companies do more than 50% of their revenue and more than 75% of their profitable revenue expanding that existing customer base. So, if you've got a mantra or a vision or a mission statement that includes the customer, make sure you live it. Well, look, uh, again, viewers out there, thanks for sticking through this and get a copy of the books. Hold the book up one more time. Keep there it up there go. and Thank get you. out to Amazon. I'm sure they can purchase it there. Um, and uh, if you really want to get to know any of these points deeper, especially customer success, by the way, uh, salesforce.com, they were such a pioneer in that yeah. new space to get to make sure people were utilizing their tools yeah, so that we get the ongoing renewal. Uh, Paul, that's great. Um, any final closing thoughts? Uh, for, the, yeah, for First of all, Bob, thank you so much for having me. I mean, you know, we're really excited about what this kind of playbook, if you will, will help, uh, whether it's, you know, folks just getting into sales, it's mm, their yeah. first up foray in, or someone who's been in the business, maybe not as long as me, but almost as long as me. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and I think it's something in there for everyone. And uh, we're very open to sharing, you know, the, the best practices, what we've learned over the years, and it's our way of, of giving back. So we're really excited about it and, and hope your audience enjoys it as well. Well, that's great. Uh, your your co-author, uh, Mark, we're going to have on uh, in a future video. So we'll look great. forward to that. And uh, what's the best way to someone to, uh, someone to contact you if they want to, well, you know, just uh, talk to you? My, my email is paul at stripes.co, not com, dot okay. co. Um, so it should be pretty easy and be more than happy to respond and assist any of them in any way I can. We'll put that up so the viewers can see it here on the screen. And Great. thanks so much. Good luck with the continued success of uh, selling the cloud. Uh, I can't wait to get my copy and, and dig into it. So everyone, thanks thank for you. watching this. Paul, thank you. Bye -bye. Cheers. Thank you, guys.